morning, Internet. Um, it's morning when I'm recording this. I'm going to probably end up editing it later. Don't know when I'll be able to post this, but good morning, and anyway. Um, today I said I was going to talk about games, uh, specifically the games that I have been playing recently. Shut up, phone. Um, so, I this there's a reason why this is going to be a short video, and that's because I haven't really been playing all that much in live games. Um, ever since a little bit before I started recording Vita, I stopped playing games. I had not played games for over four months by the time I went back to gaming. I do enjoy gaming, don't get me wrong, it's just, I don't know, maybe I haven't been in the right place. Can't really describe it, I've been really stressed and busy. However, I have been playing games recently, and, well, some of the games are really fun. Um, so the main things that I've been playing are Shining Force 2. I always tend to go back to Shining Force 2, it's one of my all-time favorite games. Mm. Um, Shining Force 2, for those of you that don't know, one, you don't know what Shining Force 2 is and you've been watching this? That's impressive. Uh, Shining Force 2 is a strategy RPG that was released for the Sega Genesis. Um, Shining Force 1 was actually the first console strategy RPG released in the United States. Uh, if you're familiar with the Fire Emblem series, the Shining Force series kind of derived from the Fire Emblem series. It's substantially easier, but, well, Shining Force 2 has a very simplistic plot. Uh, it's, you are some guy with a sword, some young guy, probably, I think you start the game around 12 or 13 or 14, and you need to go rescue the princess. I mean, it's a very cliched plot, nothing wrong with it, nothing really great about it, though. Um, one of the reasons why it's one of my favorite games is its replayability. You have a very large cast of characters. Um, I want to say there's 27 characters. I'm going... I could probably name them if I went in order, but I'm not going to right now. There's a large cast of characters, and you can only have 12 on your force at any one time. So there are enough characters where you can swap out most of your force with absolutely no issues. Which means that you can play through with a bunch of mages, you can play through with a bunch of fighter-likes, and... Well, if you're familiar with the genre, you should get the idea. Um, I am currently going through the game with the last of the characters that I have not really used. Um, it's Randolph, for those of you that know the game. Uh, I've played through a run of Shining Force 2 now with all each individual member of Creed's Mansion. Uh, the theory is that there's at one point in the game, there is this mansion, and spoilers happen... I'm not going to go over that part. As a result, you get to pick one of four characters. You can pick up the other three much later on, but by that point, they're really low level and probably not worth picking up. But the idea is that all four of these characters are supposed to be the best characters in the game of their classes. You have Karna. Karna is a monk. Or, sorry, Karna is a healer. Uh, healers can convert to either priests or master monks. Uh, Karna is definitely the best healer in the game. She's actually not the best healer in the game, but she's the best priest in the game. Sort of. Uh, you have Tyrin. Tyrin is by far the best mage in the game. Um, there's absolutely no doubts in that whatsoever. There's only three mages in the game, though, so that's not hard to do. He's also the best sorcerer in the game. Mages can promote to either wizard or sorcerer. He is... Hush, kitties. He is by far the best wizard in the game, and he's definitely the best sorcerer in the game, but not by as much. So if you want a team of both a wizard and a sorcerer, you keep Turin as a wizard and Kazin as a sorcerer, probably. Occasionally, Taya. Um, my phone is just going off the deep end. Uh, third character, the one that I've most recently played with, is Eric. Eric is a knight, and usually this would be considered a bad choice, because Shining Force 2 gives you a lot of knights to choose from. Uh, by the point in the game that you would get Eric, Eric would be your third knight, and then there are additional knights that are already promoted, so a total of five knights in the game. However, Eric is definitely the best knight. I was very shocked when I played through that run. Let me go let us in again. It's his own! He's pretty much about the same as before, just as cuddly. Um... So, where was I? Oh, right, um, 
Eric was a surprise. Eric was incredibly powerful. He might actually be my favorite character to choose now, which is strange coming from me. The last character is Randolph. Randolph is a warrior. There are only two warrior class characters in the game, the other one being Jaha, who you get toward the beginning. Um, Randolph has much higher attack. Jaha has much higher defense. So far, I'm not liking Randolph, and that's not too surprising. I don't like melee characters. I have just spoken half of this video on Training Force 2. So, I played some of that. Um, what is it? You've been fed. Um, let's see. I've also started playing Civ 5. I'm still not a huge fan of Civilization 5. I mean, Civilization 4 is probably the best of the mainline Civilization series in my mind. Um, Smack is the best of that genre, but nothing will ever beat Smack. Nothing will ever beat Smack. Anyway, um, Civ 5 doesn't feel like a Civilization game. Does anybody else have cats that want in, want out, want in, want out, want in? Oh, right, it's a cat stereotype. Felon, stop crying so much. Fine, I'll hold you and hug you. So, um, Civ Five doesn't feel like a civilization game to me. It might be due to the combat changing, where there's no stacks of doom or anything like that, and that kind of feels civilization-ish to me. It might be due to the way the game is horribly slowed down. Um, it may be due to the game incentivizing things that are not normally incentivized in Civilization games. Um, trying to play through without building a bunch of cities is driving, driving me completely batty. Hush! I am making a video. All right. Be quiet, kitty. Ah. <sighs> Point is, Civ V feels more like an Advance Wars game to me. If you're familiar with the Advance Wars series, it's kind of a break off of Fire Emblem. <laughs> um, Advance Wars is a turn-based strategy game. There's not really a role-playing component to it, but it's using a strategy RPG system. Um, the idea is that you have some ranged units, you have some melee units, um, you buy units in cities, and go from there. So, Civ V does not feel like a Civilization game, it feels like an Advance Wars game. Which, mind you, I like Advance Wars. It's not Civilization, though. Trying to play through that last time in Civ V, um, I finished it la last night after recording, er, while I was uploading the video, um, I finished a run of playing through Victory via Culture. Culture victories in turn-based strategy games tend to be my favorite and preferred type of victory, Mostly because I'm really, really good at collecting culture. This was boring. Very boring. No, no. More boring. I sat there and twiddled my thumbs for a good quarter of the game. Doing nothing. Because by expanding, which is what I would normally do, I would be penalized for the victory condition that I was trying to accomplish. And that's just not fun. So, the last game that I've been playing recently has been FTL. FTL is a great game. Um, FTL, which stands for Faster Than Light, it's an indie game. Definitely a game. Um, I would call it a roguelike space strategy game. It's very akin to playing an RPG, but it's not really an RPG. It's more like playing a choose-your-own-adventure book that randomizes itself every time that you play. And is not very forgiving. Actually, most Jews here on adventure books were not very forgiving, but this is included. Um, the idea is that you are piloting a Federation spacecraft going from where the Rebellion started up until you reach Federation space. Um, you have a very small crew, and you pick things up, weapons, crew, scrap, which scrap is your currency, basically, and experience. Uh, you pick things up as you go along until, eventually, you reach Federation space, turn around and try to blast the pure-living crap out of the Rebel flagship. That's the game. It is a lot of fun. I have finished unlocking all of the ships. I have won with ten different ships out of... Fourteen? I think it's fourteen. Um, at least one of each type of ship. It's... Well, it's a lot of fun. 
and the games are short. I mean, a run through of FTL is usually about an hour to an hour and a half long when you win. When you lose, it's typically much shorter. Go play FTL. Definitely. Out of those three games, FTL is the one that most people would like. Um, I'm always a fan of Shining Force 2. It's one of my favorite games of all time, but I understand that a lot of people would not be very happy playing such an old game at this point. I should probably go. My ride will probably be here in about 15 minutes. Bye, and good kitten, everyone.